A lot of you, well, most of you don't live in College Station, Texas. Most of you did not go to Texas A&M. So you've probably heard a lot of bluster from Texas A&M this week. But I would venture to guess nine-tenths of you don't really know what it's all about. So allow someone who also didn't grow up in Texas to explain to you what it's like living in Texas. Here we go. No hypocrisy at all in this. I have had a lot of feelings about Texas A&M, to be honest with you, over the last week. Part is empathy and part is frustration. So I'm going to explain both of them. Because the cry from Texas A&M has been like fivefold. Uh, partly, they think they got played by the SEC. You could make a strong argument they did, although I've heard some folks push back behind the scenes and out front. Leadership at Texas A&M, what they knew versus what the athletic department was allowed to know over this process could be two different things. So if someone in the athletic department tells you, I didn't know, and the university president tells you, I didn't know, well, you know, one may say it and the other may just say, I plead the fifth. My point is, even if you feel that way, I'll empathize with that. It's not cool, but it is cool. The SEC violated a gentleman's agreement. Pretty much they did. Uh, you, can, you can guess how much that's really worth in the long run. I think you and I both know the answer to that. But here's the crux of what's really aggravated Texas A&M. They were in an untenable position about a decade ago and long before that, and they looked around and said, what are our options? And they thought the best one, and they were right, was to leave the Big 12 for the SEC. And they did. And they thrived here. They made a splash immediately. There was a kid, I don't know if you remember him, Johnny Manziel. He made a really big dent in the league, changed the way football is played here. It put them on the map. Uh, they now have Jimbo Fisher there. They were on the cusp of playoff contention last year. They were a factor wire to wire. Uh, they've invested. They've recruited right. they got a great staff out there. In other words, what they look at, if you're a Texas A&M fan, you look at this and you say, so we've done everything right and we're still going to get screwed. Well, I think that's partly right. And then the second part is only right if you allow it to be right. This is where I get a little frustrated with Texas A&M. Texas A&M controls the future of Texas A&M. This is not 2008. It's not 1996. There is not some imaginary leash that's tied to you and being held by someone in Austin, Texas. It's a new day, especially if it's happening in this conference, in the SEC. It's a new day. But this whole concept of battered Aggie syndrome, that stuff's real. And if you don't believe it's real, listen to some of the sentiment coming out of College Station. I equated it this week to looking at a tiger a circus tiger in a cage, and the cage is unlocked, but the tiger never runs out of the cage. Why doesn't it? Well, is it just conditioned to believe that those bars mean something, whether the lock's on it or not? My point with Texas A&M is if this were two decades ago, there'd be a reason to feel that way. It's a whole new day. And while you may feel like you're being played in the immediacy by the, Texas, or by the, uh, the SEC administration and the SEC administrative types, while Texas A&M folks may be very aggravated with the SEC league office right now, why don't you turn that coin upside down for just a second, realize what this nine-year head start has done for you? I don't think you guys think as highly of Texas A&M as some of us do who have no apparent affiliation with the program. Because someone like me, I look at Texas A&M, I see awesome tradition. I see an immaculate stadium. I see equally immaculate facilities. You guys can uh, use dollar bills to smoke cigars wrapped in if you want to. You print money, and so you have invested everywhere you need to invest to be successful. You've got one of the best head coaches in America. He's got one of the best coaching staffs in America. And you're on equal footing in this conference, which is really where all this begins and ends. In the Big 12, you were at a disadvantage because Texas had a disproportionate advantage in the Big 12 relative to anyone else. In the SEC, if Texas ends up coming in here and they end up tilting things in their favor, it's only because you allowed it to happen. But what's happening in a lot of cases, when you listen to A&M, some, not all, there have been a lot of very vocal A&M fans that are echoing the same sentiment I am. Some Texas A&M fans have looked at it and say it's going to be the Big 12 all over. If it's the Big 12 all over, if things are tilted in Texas' favor, it's only because you guys bent the picture sideways. Because that's not the way things operate in the SEC. It's why I just said what I said about Texas a little while ago. Texas does not walk in here and tilt things anywhere. They're standing on the same footing as everyone else. And from that point, what you achieve is what you earn. That's the way it works for Georgia. That's the way it works for Florida. That's the way it works for Kentucky. And that's the way it's worked for you. And it will not change once Texas walks in the door. If they start out recruiting you, it's because they're beating you on the recruiting trail. It's not because the SEC gave them some unfair advantage. So what I'm saying is, are you getting a raw deal? Maybe you are. 
But having said that, think about what that nine-year head start has given you. It's given you the ability to look across the state and to say, for the first time in that program's history, if we take care of what we need to take care of, Texas is irrelevant. They don't have control over us. The thing's not tilted in their favor anymore. So that's where the frustration's been for me in relation to Texas A&M all week. I look out there and I say, what? Why do I think more highly of the capability of Texas A&M, regardless of who's in this conference, than some people at Texas A&M do? I understand the frustration. I understand procedurally where the frustration comes from. I get all that. But if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. So, you know, you can take a stand and you can do whatever you feel is necessary to give just the, the old college try of pushback on this. I understand all that. I would probably do the same if I were you. But there's going to come a point where you got to look and you just got to say game on. I've heard some Aggie fans say it already. I've heard some administrative types out there say it. I wish it was a collective chant instead of just a few people isolated here and there saying that. So that's the feel, at least from where I sit on Texas A&M.